Amen, amen. Give the Lord a hand this morning. Well, God's on the throne. Amen? Amen. As I said this morning in prayer, I truly believe that God has something for us this morning. All we got to do is reach out and take it. Amen? That's our call. Amen? Well, I know that Satan is on the rampage, and I know that he's trying to destroy everybody that he possibly can destroy, but as we gave these chains last week, right here at this altar to the Lord, some of you wasn't here. We had a, a wonderful service last Sunday that everybody that had chains that was binding them down, we came down here and we gave them to the, gave them to the Lord. Now it's time to move on. We need to become radical Christians. Amen? You know, you hear about radical Islam all the time. ISIS. We all know what that is, don't we? They're trying to kill everybody. They think they're doing it in the name of God. But we all know better than that. They're doing it in the name of Satan. Because the Bible tells us that if possible, even the very leak would be deceived in the last days. Well, those people were brought up from baby to what they are today, thinking what they're doing God's service, just like a lot of people that are sitting on the church pews of these American churches today. Amen? I want you to take your Bibles, and I want you to go to Philippians, the third chapter. And we're going to read verse number 14 and 15, and I'm going to pray while you're finding your place there. Father, I thank you so much for the ones that you brought into this church this morning. I know they're not here by chance. They're not even here on their own. You brought them here. Because, Father, I don't believe in luck. I don't believe in anything that we do on our own. Everything, Lord, that is, uh, has anything pertaining to you, you do it. Lord, I know you've drawn every person here that is here this morning. And, Lord, this whole service, this whole sermon may not be for everybody, but I know parts and pieces is for everybody. Lord God, I'm asking you, Lord, that you anoint my lips and that you would anoint every ear in this place to be able to receive what you want us to receive this morning, dear God. Because, Father, no matter what we think, time is short. We keep living day by day thinking it's okay. We're going to make it another day. But, Father, we know within a, within a twinkling of an eye, your son is going to step out of them clouds. And, Father, help us, Lord, from, help us from this moment on to be radical Christians. Lord, there's a lot of radical things in this world, but it's not Christianity. And, Father, I'm asking you right now that you would help this little church become that radical Christian, this radical church that you want us to become. And, Father, I'm asking you that these words would jump out at these people, Lord, and that they would apply them to their lives. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. God's good. Okay. The Bible tells us over in Philippians, the third chapter, and we're going to start in the 14th verse. And it's telling us, it says, uh, let me find my place here, 3 to 14. I done got over in the fourth chapter. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, here we go. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. This was Paul speaking. Paul, back in his days, they didn't have this. They didn't have God's word, okay? They were spoke to through prophets. In Jesus. Well, today we have God's word. We have people that can tell us things. We have so many accesses to being able to find the true ways of God. We have the internet. Amen? Amen. There's many, many a way that we can get to the throne of God. Amen? Amen? But no matter what we think, what we do in our lives... There's only one way to get there, and that's through Jesus Christ. A lot of people, they pick and choose what they want to live by out of this word. Brother Jason was going to try to find me a Bible, but I guess he couldn't find it. Couldn't find it, son, wherever he went. Well, anyway, he was going to try to find a Bible to put up on there. Back in the day when I was a young girl growing up, all the Bibles, y'all wouldn't know it today because you don't hardly ever see them. Every Bible on the front of the Bible, it had Holy Bible. Big bold letters, Holy Bible, okay? Well, today you don't hardly see that. It's usually on the 
Usually on the side or somewhere in the Bible, okay? Huh? Oh, there we are, right there. You see, Holy Bible. Well, nowadays, it's the worldly Bible. I'm going to pick what I want out of there and I'm going to leave the rest. But God's Word tells us I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. No matter what we think, this is why I have this shirt on this morning. It is what it is. God's Word is what it is. You cannot pick and choose what you want out of this Bible. You have to go by everything that God tells us to go by. He tells us to walk in Jesus' footsteps, does he not? Okay, now let's go a little bit further. Let's read this. Because it's going to get good, guys. Verse number 15 says, Let us therefore as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal unto you, uh, unto you, unto you. Okay. Now, what this is telling me is, we can go on. We laid the chains down. We don't go back anymore. You keep pressing forward for that mark of excellence. Amen? We have to stand strong in God no matter what. There's an old saying, and it's so true. The closer that you draw to God, the more the devil is going to fight you. Poor Brother Albert, if he ain't had one thing happen this week, he's had something else happen. His car blowed up. He's had all kind of problems. His sewer wouldn't work. His water wouldn't work. I mean, you know, it just, it's just been one thing after another. But that's how Satan works. He wants to try to destroy Brother Albert's faith. Amen? But we have to be strong as he has to be strong in God. Now, go back a page, Philippians 1.27. It says... <laughs> it says this guys it says only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ everything that that don't mean just your words okay that there conversation means everything that you say and you do let it be becometh as the gospel of Christ in other words you know y'all seen people wear the little bracelets what would Jesus do Okay, well, that's what, that's what this word is trying to tell us. What would Jesus do? We have to do everything and say everything as in the steps of Jesus. Amen? And it says that whether I come and see you or else be absent. Now, he was talking. He had left the church and had to go start another church. This was Paul speaking, okay? He says, uh, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit. Now, here's another problem with churches today. There's a lot of people that will sit in one church and they all have different theories of what God's Word says. That's a no-no. The Bible just told us we have to be in one spirit, one mind. I can't believe one way that God tells me I can go honky-tonking, but Pastor Steve says he ain't going to. He don't believe that. Okay? Now, there's so many different things. Some people think, well... It's okay to do this and do that, and they come to church, and they don't have to do what they're supposed to do in the Bible. Amen? Now, like I said a while ago, it is what it is, no matter what you think, okay? It says, with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. Now, they, he doesn't have that on there, but I'm going to read something to you. Ephesians, I think it's the uh, fourth chapter. Let's see here. Yeah. The fourth chapter and the 13th verse. It says, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God into a perfect man, unto the measure of statue of the fullness of Christ, or the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. Now I'm going to stop right there just a second. You should not go from church to church. You need to find you a church, plant yourself in it, and stay there if... If, this is a big word right now, if they are teaching the Word of God. Amen. They can't be pacifying you. The Word of God tells us in the last days that there would be many preachers that are in wolf's, uh, wolf's clothing, I mean in sheep's clothing, preaching you things that you want to hear. 
like it's okay to go out and do this, and it's okay to do that, and it's all this. This is all fine. That, no, that's not what God's Word says. The Bible also tells us that we must study this Word ourselves to be approved. Brother Albert ain't going to get Sister Sue to heaven. And I'm not going to get Brother Albert to heaven. Right? right? right. They're right, Brother Albert. Right. <laughs> we have to get ourselves there. Now, we all know what's been happening in the last few weeks to America. Have we not? Yep. I told some of the church people the other day, I said, the people in America, not all people, but most of the people in America make me sick to my stomach. You're saying you don't like them, you don't love them? No, I love them. But when a government, and I don't care who likes this or don't like it, that's your call. You're going to have to answer to God someday, but I'm going to speak what God wants me to say. Anytime that a government will allow homosexuality to be what it is today, it's headed to hell. When you put things up on the White House, the rainbow flag, and say it's okay, and God's word says that it's an abomination to him, this country is headed to hell in a handbasket. Then we had all that shooting here a couple of weeks ago down there in Florida. They shot up all them homosexuality or homosexual people and killed about 49 or 50 of them. Is it sad that their souls are gone? If they didn't die instantly, they might have had a chance. But I can assure you, some of them is in hell today. Right. Why? Because I'm going to do what I want to do, whether you like it or not. That's, right. That's just like taking this Bible. <laughs> That's sad. It's like taking this Bible, throwing it on the ground, <clears throat> kicking God in the face. Come on. It's kicking him in the face, saying, I don't got to do what you tell me to do. I'm going to do what I feel like I want to do. And then they lay all these people, these, they're not men. They're morons. Amen. They allow a man to go into a woman's bathroom. How sick is that? That is sick as it can be. They ought to castrate every one of them. Amen. You want to be a woman, then be one. Amen. It's like I heard a guy saying the other day. He said, whatever you're born with, that's what you are. Amen. No matter what you try to do to yourself, that's what you are. Right. It's time, y'all, that we have to stand up and be radical Christians. Amen. Radical. Speak the truth. Who cares if they like it or not? This coming Tuesday morning, you can pass by our car lot if you'd like. The American flag is coming down. Amen. It's coming down. The only flag that I will leave standing in my office grounds will be the Christian flag. Because I do not agree with America. It's wrong. It is wrong to allow stuff like, where is the Christians? Amen. Stand up for what you believe. I'll tell you what, there will probably be a lot of people come there and cuss me and whatever they want to do. But you know what? I don't care. I'm going to stand for what I believe. Amen. When that nation, when, a, when the government allows stuff like that to go on in this country, then why would I want to say that I'm a proud American? Amen. I'm not proud of this country. I love the country. But the government makes me sick. That's what I'm saying. And you know what it is? It starts in the church house. And it's been allowed to go into the White House. That's why, because people will not stand up and be a radical Christian. Now, they have all these radical Islam people running around doing whatever they want to do. We have to allow those people to come into this country, and we have to take our tax money that we pay month to month to allow those people to come in here to be whatever they want to do, blow these people away, and we have to say it's okay. No. That's right. Here's the thing. It's not, only, it's not only the Islam people. We got white, black, yellow, and purple right here in this state or in this country that is just worse off as Islam. Why? 
Because people will not stand up and say, hey, this is what God's word says. It is what it is. If you have to go down on the corner of Walmart and stand there and begin to act like somebody that's stupid, do it. Why? Because someday you're going to stand before God. God has told us this is what's happening. We see in the world that the world is dying and going to hell while we're sitting here on these church play pews playing church. Come on. Come on, guys. Why? Why are you doing that? It ain't doing you a bit of good to come to this church from Sunday to Sunday if you're not going to become a radical Christian. None. None. What's the point to it? Well, I'm a bashful person. I don't know how to speak to people. Well, someday you're going to speak to God. Amen. Someday you're going to be in down in front of God, and you're going to have to say what you've done and what you ain't done. That's right. You better learn how to do it now. Amen. You better learn how to do it now. We've got two cuckoo heads that's running for president. Amen. Both of them is about as nutty as a fruitcake. Which one do you vote for? The less evil? I don't know. The less evil. Come on. Here's the thing. That's the Christian's fault. Amen. We let a kook head back in there eight years ago. That was the Christian's fault. It goes on back. We can go back. I can remember when I was a kid growing up. You've never seen the things that you see today. And I'm not that old. Well, some of you might think I am. But I'm 58 years old. I can remember being a kid. You've never seen two women walking around holding hands. You've never seen that. <laughs> yeah, unless you was mother and daughter, but people realize that. You've never, ever seen a man dressed like a woman. <laughs> you never seen that. Nowadays, it's whatever whatever makes you feel good, you do it. I'm going to tell you something. Most of the things that makes you feel good is demonic. It's demonic. You know what demonic means? It's a bad spirit that Satan is trying to throw on you. Throw on you. The only thing that will truly make you feel good is the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God, guys. Now, let's go down to 1 Corinthians 9.25. And every man that striveth for the mastery to temperate in all things, now they do it to obtain the corruptible crown, but we are incorruptible. Okay, now what that's talking about, we are striving to obtain a crown of righteousness. Is that true? We're supposed to be striving for that. But if we cannot come into the unity of Christ and be in one chord and one, well, let me put it like this, one mind and one accord, then you might as well leave the church. You cannot have your own opinion of what you think God's word ought to be. You have to have your mind made up, as my poor old mother used to say. You have to have a made-up mind. You have to have that made-up mind. You can't go out sleeping around with anybody you choose to sleep with. You kids, close your ears. But it is what it is. You can't go out taking your prescribed pills because, well, the doctor says I need them. There's nothing wrong with taking medicine. But I'm going to tell you something. When you begin to think, oh, I can't live without this, something wrong with you. You need to begin to pray and say, God, deliver me from this mess. But God is not going to deliver you until you're ready to do what you're supposed to do. Amen. God's good. But you see, here's the thing. Me and Pastor has been in this, this little journey of this little church for 15 years as of last Sunday. And believe me, guys, it has been a journey. It's been up and it's been down. It's been up and it's been down. Now, we have a few faithful ones. Poor Sister Vi, she's been here since the beginning. Raise your hand, Sister Vi. She's been with us since day one, basically. Day one. Vi was a moron when I met her. She really was. But God, that just goes to show you what God can do. Because there was nothing Vi wouldn't do. Nothing. She did every kind of drug and then some. 
She was a prostitute down on Simmons Drive. I'm not trying to condemn her. I'm just telling you where God has brought the woman from. Why? Because she was willing. Yes. Has she struggled? Yes. We all have moments that we struggle with things. But that doesn't mean that we cannot get over them because God's word tells us that he gives us power to overcome. Power. How do you get power? You pray. You seek God's word. You hunger for the word. If you're not hungry for God's word, begin to say, God, please give me a hunger for your word. I need it. I need it. Most of us, we don't know the front of the Bible from the back of the Bible. We don't know. Well, I don't understand the Bible. Well, you know what I think about you? You're making excuses. You don't want to know the Bible. Because, well, you say, well, I can't read very good. Get you a CD. They'll read it for you. There's always ways to learn the Word of God if you want to learn the Word of God. <clears throat> now, I know some of you in here. And there again, I don't care what you think. I'm tired of being pacifying people. It's time to stand up and do what we need to do. Some of you in this church was raised Baptist. Once saved, always saved. Well, I was saved when I was five. You might have been at that time, but you're not saved now. Why? Because if you're out there doing things that you don't supposed to be doing, you're not saved. You're not saved. You don't understand here, guys. God has drawn. Well, let me put it this way. God is drawing you. He loves you. As I said this morning in the prayer, you're not here by chance. God has brought you here to hear the sermon that you're hearing this morning. Why? Because you need to say, okay, God, I'm tired of playing. It is what it is. If you don't plan on really doing what God wants you to do, why do you come to church to feel good? To get you some little goosebumps and say, oh, I felt good Sunday morning. And you're a jerk when you walk out the door. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can't go home and cuss your wife and your kids. You can't go home and be overbearing because you're the man of the house or you're the woman of the house. You've got to go home and act like Jesus acts. You have to do this, guys. Or you're wasting your time coming to the church. How many of you like joy and peace? Amen. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. How do we get that? Pastor and I have had people to say, how in the world have you been for married 42 years? Because I have a frying pan at home. Cast iron. <laughs> Pastor, Pastor and I, and this ain't putting a feather in my hat nor his hat, but we get along as if we was married yesterday. Why? Because we keep God first in our marriage. If we didn't, he would kill me for sure. I'm telling you. And I'd have done killed him. But anyway. <laughs> But that's how we get along because we love the joy of the Lord. Amen. It's our strength. We go down the road holding hands. Amen. Most people don't even want to see their mate. Amen. Most less hold their hand. Right. Why? Because they have the devil leading them. Right. <clears throat> the devil has people making goo-goo eyes at other people. Yep. Or somebody else is making goo-goo eyes at you. Do you know that there's more divorce, divorces in the Christian world than there is out in the, in the outside the world? Why is that? It's because Satan attacks the marriages of the Christian. And we're too blind because we're not into this enough. God, help me to be the wife that I need to be to my husband. Help me to love him as you love me. Help me to see him as, as you see me. Help him to be the husband that he needs to be to me. Don't let him come off thinking he's some big bad boy. That that don't work. But don't let me come home thinking I'm some big bad girl. Right. Honey, how was your day today? If he gets a little snappy, honey, have you had a hard day? Well, you know he has, honey. Now remember, we're supposed to be Christian. That nips it in the bud. Why? 
Because Satan is going to do everything he can to stop your marriage, guys. But you know, the Bible tells us. I don't remember where it's at. It's in the Old Testament. God's Word says, my people perish because of the lack of knowledge. The lack of knowledge. Because why? They're not studying the Word. They're not seeking God. That's why. you got to study the Word. As my husband has told me several times, he said, when I married you, you was as dumb as a box of rocks. Oh. <laughs> you know what, guys? It was true. <laughs> Sad but true. And I'm telling you, God has brought me to where I am today. Why? Because I studied. I prayed. I seek God. <coughs> and I hungered for the things that God had for me to go after. None of us is exempt. God has gifts for everybody sitting in this church. Everybody. But you see, we have to take the initiative to say, okay, God, what is it that you want me to do? See, we have to come into unity, guys. We have to be in one mind and we have to be in one accord. If not, we're not going to be able to stand. Amen? Amen? And I think a lot of times, even the people in this church, and I'm not saying everybody, I'm just saying some. We're not truly seeing what's happening in this world. Our eyes are blinded. They're blinded. See, there's the scripture right there. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. You have rejected going in there reading the word. You'd rather go in there and watch TV. Or you'd rather go in there and play on the computer. Now, is it fun a lot of times to go in there and sit down and read the word? No. Because the flesh is weak, the spirit is willing. It says, I will also reject thee. God told us in his word, I will reject you. How many wants to be rejected from heaven? I don't see a hand up, do you? Now, this is not Sister Sue saying this. This is out of God's word. It says that thou shalt be no priest to me. In other words, you ain't worth a hoot. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of God, I will also forget thy children. Now, you know, we pray for our children every day. Oh, God, please help my moron son to be something that he needs to be for you. Or help my daughter that's doing stupid things she shouldn't be doing. Open her eyes. We pray prayers like that, don't we? But we're not living it. We're not living it. How do you expect God to save your children when you're a moron? You know what a moron is? You're somebody as dumb as a box of rocks. Come on. you got to be living. You're saying, well, I'm trying. There's no such thing trying in the Bible. What do you got to do, Sister Pai? Just, just do it. you got to just do it, guys. You have to stand no matter what the situation is. You know, I've been in this journey for a long time. November the 6th, I'll be in church. 28 years, that's a long time. That's a long time. And I have seen a lot of things going on in a church from the time I've started till this day right now. I've seen the, the good times of people, and I've seen the bad times of people. <clears throat> and I can honestly say, I was teaching, me and Sister Monica was teaching the kids in the back this morning, and we was talking about Noah and the ark. And I, we was telling them, how many people were saved on that ark out of that whole last world? Eight. Eight, guys. Eight. Why? Because the people rejected. God told Noah, go build that ark. I'm coming. And all the people, yeah, just like today, just like today, oh, well, they've been saying that for thousands of years. True. <coughs> but look, just look as I said, look at the last month. That has happened right here in America. Everybody's like, oh, Shalon. Oh, well, it ain't me. We should be running to this church every time the doors are open. Amen. To get all we can to fellowship with our brothers and sisters. Because this is where we draw strength from each other. If we don't have each other, it's hard. It's very hard. But you see, that's why you have a pastor. That's why you have people teachers and stuff in a church that's trying to help you to grow. But now listen to me. This is where I get discouraged at. 
just because you're not a teacher and just because you're not a preacher does not mean that you can't say something that will encourage me. Okay? If you're not here or if you're still out there doing whatever you shouldn't be doing and we hear that and we see that, it makes us think our teaching and our preaching ain't doing no good. Come on. You should be changing. What does the Bible tell us? When you get saved, the old man's dead. The new man's supposed to rise. Amen? So you can't continue to sit in the church for the past 15 years and act like you did when you first walked through the doors of that church. That's discouraging to the pastor and his family or in, in the church family. They see no change in you. <clears throat> and you come down here and you whine and cry and sling snot every time the, the altar calls open and you have no more intention of going out there and being what God's called you to do than the man in the moon. You want the relief right then. And then from that point on, you don't want change. You can't do that, guys. You can't. You've got to push that devil. You've got to reject the devil. As Brother George used to say, put old slew foot under your feet. Amen. It's hard, yes, but you got to peep. Just think about it, guys. How many of you love to be around people that's full of joy? Amen. I do. I just want to rub all against them. I want some of that joy on me. Amen. Who wants to be around people? Whoa, me. Poor me. I got this problem, and I got, you couldn't imagine the problems that I got. Well, you couldn't imagine the other problems some people's got. I don't see a person in here that don't have no shoes on. Everybody's got clothes in, praise God, or on, praise God. Most of you look like you combed your hair this morning. Well, I said most. You didn't say all. The pastor didn't comb his hair this morning. <laughs> And Brother Timothy, he didn't have too much to comb. He just had one slap he had to do. <laughs> but you see, there's a lot more people that's out in this world, guys, that's suffering. I want to be somebody that can go out and witness to the poor. You know, if God told us, now you're saying that you're a Christian, and God has told us, if you're, if, if, if God told you to go out in Houston, Texas, and lay underneath the underpass, I was telling the women this Tuesday, and become homeless with the people that's homeless, sell everything you have and go, would you do it? Y'all, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, I'd do that. Would you really? Would you lay underneath an underpass of I-10 out there in Houston, knowing that you left everything behind? That's what Jesus did. Of course, there was no I-10 back in them days, but still, there was mountains and there was dirty old roads. What did he tell the people? Sell everything you got. Now, I'm not telling everybody to go home and sell everything they got, okay? That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, how much do you love Jesus? Remember when Jesus told Peter, you love me, Peter? Yes, Lord, I love you. You love me, Peter? Yes, Lord, I love you. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. He says, why are you asking me that? You've said that three times. I'm paraphrasing, but y'all know where I'm going. He said, then go feed my sheep. Go feed the sheep. There's a lot of lost sheep out in this world, guys. Quit playing church on these church pews from Sunday to Sunday. Get yourself together. Get rid of them chains. They're gone. Now, I'm going to close with this. Luke 13, 24. Look, well, let's stop right there. Hold on, guys. Turn that back there, baby. Can you go back? <coughs> submit yourselves, therefore, to God. How many of you knows what submit means? Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. That means to hang on to him like a junkyard dog. Resist the devil. you got to resist that devil. Sometimes you got to punch him in the nose. Stay there, Bubba. you got to punch him. And he, he didn't say he might. It says he will flee from you. How do you get to that point in your life? This in prayer. Don't just read the word. Live the word. Amen. Now go to the next one, baby. Luke 13, 24. <coughs> 
It says strive. Strive. Everything you got, you need to strive to enter in at the straight gate. You know, back over in Matthew 13, well, I'm going to read that because that's my favorite verses. This was the first verse God ever gave me when I got saved. And it took me a long time to figure it out, but he showed me. Matthew 7, 13 and 14 says, it says, wrong chapter here, Sue. Okay, it says, enter ye in the straight gate, for the wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And a few there be that find it. Now remember, guys, I was as dumb as a box of rocks, so think about this. I'm thinking, now, Lord, what does that mean? you got to show me what that means, Lord, because I don't understand what you're talking about. And he said, think about this, Sue. He says, there's billions of people on this earth. Yes, Lord. He said, how many people do you know that truly serve me? I'm sitting there thinking. Now, Sue, I mean truly serve me. I said, well, Lord, truthfully, I don't know anybody that really, truly serves you with all their heart. Now, remember what I told you a while ago, guys. Noah, there was eight people. Eight. He said, okay. He said, now put two and two together. Strive to enter into that straight gate. You've got to strive because the gate is narrow. Narrow. The one that leads to hell is super wide. How many of you think more people are going to hell than they're going to heaven? Amen. And you're thinking, who are you to judge people? I'm not judging you. It is what it is. The Bible says you know them by their fruits. Amen. You can't go out honky-tonking and partying and sleeping around and doing whatever you're doing and think you're right in righteousness. It don't happen. Right. <coughs> you know, I'm not here to criticize nobody. I'm really not. I don't want you to go to hell. I want to see everybody make heaven their home. I want to see this little church be in one mind and one accord to where we can go out in the highways and the byways. The Bible tells us, let no man, think about this, guys, let no man be able to accuse you of any wrong. That don't mean just Pastor or Pastor Scotty or some of the Sunday school teachers. That means you. Don't let anybody be able to accuse you for doing anything wrong. That's a powerful, powerful scripture, isn't it? Can you say that, though? I'm fixing to close. Just remember, guys, strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many I say unto you, there again, this is Jesus' words, I say unto you will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Why? Why? You know why. You done been told why. Because you cannot play both sides. You cannot straddle the fence. You have to get in. You have to stay in. Like I said, everybody likes joy. They like peace. They want things to be good for them. And yes, even as a Christian, are you going to go through things? Yes, most definitely you will go through things. But there's nothing like having the Lord when you're going through them. Because why? He will give you peace. He will give you that joy to overcome anything that Satan throws across your path. So be strong, guys. We fix to have an altar call. And if you truly, well, let me, we're going to have a couple altar calls. If you don't really know God and you've never really served God, but you want to be that radical Christian, I want you to come. I want somebody to put some music on back there. There's nothing to be ashamed of, bashful of. Hey, we've all been there and we've all done it.